Want to know the real secret to generating even better results through your ad campaigns? We've talked about the structure, the visuals, the videos, but what does it really take to get it converting to the best of your ability? It comes down to one keyword. Want to hear it? Let's dive right in. Well, hello there, my friend. Welcome back to another episode of the More Than Social podcast. My name is Lisa Ann, and here's another episode of our four podcast series where you will learn how to master creating Facebook and Instagram ads for your business. After all, we all want to maximize these ads that we're running to see that big return on investment. I guess time really does fly when you're learning something new. In the first segment of this podcast series, you learn how do you actually create ad copies and creatives for your brand. Just last week, we discussed the advanced targeting strategies to really help you reach more people in your dream audience. And this week, well, let's just say we are getting a little bit more technical by the minute. But trust me, learning all of these complex strategies will only make your life and even your business a lot simpler. So today we're going to dive into another technical aspect of maximizing your Facebook and Instagram ads. We're going to talk about A-B testing and optimization techniques. Now, I know this term can sound a little bit overwhelming, but you know I like keeping things on this episode very, very simple. A-B testing simply means comparing two different things at one time, hence the A and then the B. So in this case, you're comparing the effectiveness of two different ads that you're running. What's getting more clicks? What's converting better? What makes a good ad run better than another ad? Although as simple as the name actually says, A-B testing, most of the time it's not as easy as ABC. I find a lot of business owners who try to jump into ads or even what I see come up a lot within my Spotlight Theory program is that people create a specific ad, they put some money behind it, and then they just let it run. Now, I wish I could sit here and tell you that yes, you can just place one ad and let the magic happen, but there's always tweaks that you're gonna wanna make to get better and better and better results over time. Now, I find most don't do this because they either don't have the budget to effectively test different things, they don't know how to actually interpret the data that's coming in, or are testing way too many things at once. Over the last eight years, I've tested a lot, and I mean a lot of different ads. I've generated over a million leads, and I'll tell you the truth that not once would any of those leads come just from one particular ad. So if you've been running an ad for a while, trying to master this ad approach, or simply you just want to make sure that you are doing things right right now for your business, we're going to dive into the complexities of all of this A-B testing aspects. And I promise you, I will simplify things as much as possible as we go through. So today we're going to talk all about setting up your A-B test and what that actually looks like, ways to interpret your results. That way you understand what's working and what's not working and how to refine all of these tests based on the results and the metrics that you actually get. So let's start talking about how do you actually set up an A-B test for your business? If you didn't already realize it, setting up your A-B test is One of the most important parts of this entire process, it's the make or break to the success of your actual ad campaign. Let me reiterate what A-B testing means once again, just so we are all on the same page. A-B testing, also known as split testing for most, refer to this systematic process where you're comparing two different versions of your ad. It's really a fundamental tool in any marketing strategy to really just fine tune the ad campaigns so that they work actually effectively or simply because you want to get good results from running your ads. I totally get it. So here are the basic steps to help you set up A-B tests for one element of your ad. Let's go through this step-by-step together. So the very, very first thing you have to do is have a clear objective for your A-B test. Ask yourself, 
Why am I split testing in the first place? What specific aspects of my ad am I trying to improve? It could be your click-through rates, meaning how many people actually click on the ad and take the action that you want them to take. It could be your conversion rate where people are actually completing the action that you want them to take or any other performance indicator that is relevant to your ad campaign based on the stats that you get. The second step that I want you to do is identify what element are you going to test right now. So common ones that I always like to test are different headlines, different visuals, different hooks in the actual ad copy, different call to actions in the ad copy, or different call to action buttons on the actual ad, and even testing with or without emojis. So say you want to test your call to action copy in your ad, and let's just say for this example, you're running a free webinar. So you may want to test between a call to action A, sign up now, or B, call to action could be, yes, I want to reserve my spot. Now, the biggest tip that I could give you with this is to make sure that you are testing one element at a time. That way you actually understand what is working and what is not working based on the tweaks that you're making. Your numbers is going to show you exactly this information. So maybe let's just say the sign up now call to action, you notice you're not getting as many people clicking on the link to sign up. Whereas when you have the ad that says, yes, I want to reserve my spot, you're getting double the amount of clicks and actually for a cheaper rate. From then forward, you're going to want to keep this as your initial baseline call to action. So use this one moving forward. Okay, make sense? Okay, so the third step is to actually create the two different variations of the ad. And the fourth step is you're going to set up different tracking. So there are stats that you're going to get from your ad account when you're running your ads. But if you are sending people off for social media to take action, so let's say they're registering for a course, booking a call, that type of situation, you want to make sure that you have your meta pixel set up to be able to track what people are doing off of social media. So once you have all of these things set up, it's safe to say you're now ready to actually launch your ads and see what's going to happen. So you launch both ads at the exact same time and you let it run. So I typically would test for a minimum of 10 to 7 days after you spend about $100 on the campaign, depending on what you hit first. But that way you actually have enough data. So what happens when you place an ad is that Facebook and Instagram, they're going to basically split your audience into a bunch of little buckets. They would then show your ad to each individual bucket, so one at a time, and they're testing to see who is actually going to take the action that you want them to take. Once they learn who within that bucket will do what you actually want them to do, they will eventually get out of something that's called the learning phase. Meaning the algorithm has a good idea of who to show your ads to based on the goal that you told them that you want to achieve. So once you've let that ad run and you're letting the system actually work its magic, you can then just start comparing your results. This is my very favorite part about running ads. It eventually kind of just turns into this big game. You see what is working and how your tweaks are going to make an impact on the performance. So this is huge from a marketing perspective. When you are placing a billboard, let's just say on the side of a highway, or even running a commercial on TV, you don't get this data. Digital marketing, in my opinion, has changed the way that we actually look at marketing. It 100% is always going to be an investment, but it's a lot more insightful on the back end performance when you can see exactly what is working and what is not and why. So I promise you, you are eventually going to love these stats just as much as I do. But let's actually talk about these stats more and figure out exactly what is going on with your ads. Just remember this, if you want to optimize your testing and get better and better results, then you need to learn how to actually read the numbers that are in front of you. There are a few key numbers that I really pay attention to, whether that's with my ads, my clients' ads, or teaching these ads. But the first one I want you to pay attention to is your reach and impressions. This is how many people are actually seeing your ad. It doesn't matter if they are taking the action that you want them to actually take yet. It tells us nothing about the actual ad, but these two numbers alone, I like to focus on them because it tells us if our audience size is too small or not. Now, another number I pay attention to is the frequency. So this is telling us how many times one person is actually seeing my ad. If you are running an ad and targeting a cold audience, someone who never knows who you are, it's the very first time that they're seeing you, I don't like that number to get higher than two. 
if it's a retargeting campaign, and we're actually going to get into this in depth next week, but essentially a retargeting campaign, you're bringing people back into your bubble, try to keep this number below four. Now, there are two stats really that impact your ad copy directly, and this is your click-through rate and your conversion rate. A click-through rate measures how many people actually click on your ad after they see it. A higher CTR percentage or click-through rate percentage means that your ad is compelling, it's relevant, and it's attracting the attention from the target audience. Try to keep this number above 1%. And the second one is that conversion rate. So again, a conversion is essentially someone's taking a specific action off of social media. So that could be generating a lead, them making a purchase, signing up for something, booking an appointment, whatever that looks like for you. A higher conversion rate means that your ad is actually convincing the people who are seeing your ad to take the action that you actually want them to take. So essentially, this is telling us the ad's ability to convert that interest into actual action. But remember, whenever you're running ads, there's always going to be that waiting period. Nothing magical is going to happen overnight. I will promise you that. But again, I always recommend to run ads for at least seven days. And now, of course, this will vary based on the budget and the size of your audience. If your company has a smaller budget or if you're targeting a very, very niche audience, it may actually take longer for you to collect enough data before you can decide what's working and what's not. If you have a great budget to allocate, it's easier to generate those significant numbers of interactions really, really quickly. So on the other hand, the actual type of conversation or conversion that you're looking for within your industry, that's gonna impact it too. So for example, one of our clients, they have a three-part mini course. So they target females who are interested in personal development, just to keep it relatively simple here. So we are generating hundreds of leads per week because their lead cost is $3.50. Whereas another client who's a photographer, we are running ads to get full applications versus just downloads of the course, his lead cost is $60. So they are two completely different strategies, two completely different industries, two completely different outcomes even. So if I was running an ad for $20 a day, and I was just starting out, it would take me about three to four days before I even saw a lead come in for that photographer. The fun part is once you actually have your numbers and you know those baselines, that's when you can then create these A-B tests to beat your number. This is the game of it all and this is really what I love to do. So keep in mind though, the process of A-B testing is not a one-time effort. This is an ongoing cycle of improvement. When I am managing our client's ad accounts within our agency, I am constantly, and I mean constantly, making tweaks to the campaigns. Some are going to be on a weekly basis. Some are multiple times a week. One of our clients, we actually have a budget of $2,000 a day, which is fantastic. So, but you can imagine how many different campaigns that I can run and all the different tests that I can do pretty quickly compared to someone who has a $500 budget. Now, if I could summarize all of these into actionable tips and really break it down for you, there's about six things I want you to pay attention to. So first one, do not stop testing. Seriously, do not get lazy with this. I said it in the very beginning today that results really come down to one main thing, that's testing. You can always, and I mean always, get better results. Test different ad variations, new strategies, altogether different audiences. There's so much more that we can dive into based on the just the high level information I gave you today. Number two, remember to test one thing at a time. Always keep that principle of testing that one element. So whether you're testing the headlines, the visuals, or any other element, even the audience, focus on these small incremental changes. Doing this makes it really easy for you to pinpoint what is actually driving your success. By testing one thing at a time, you can identify which change led to what performance. So for example, if you tested a learn more button versus a sign up button, which I do quite a lot, you will know that they'll learn more, let's just say, generate more leads. That's what you're gonna be doing moving forward. Use that one button. And also when you start to spread your budget too thin and keep yourself or your campaigns in this learning phase that we talked about, it's because you are testing too many things at once. So number three, set a regular testing schedule. So make sure that you're actually establishing a schedule that you can commit to. So this will 100% depend on your budget, absolutely. But it's really just getting into the habit of testing something new, whether that's every week or at least every other week. 
when you do this, I challenge you not to look at your ads every day. I know it's so much easier said than done. And it's really cool to actually watch your ad journey, but you could be harming yourself if you were actually looking at the stats every day or multiple times a day. No joke. Your energy can impact your ads, but also you have other things to do. Focus your attention elsewhere. Let the system do its work. One client that we worked with, I actually had to remove him from his entire ad account. This guy would log in so many times a day trying to dissect exactly what is happening with every single audience, every single ad. He would stress and stress and stress. And all of a sudden, I challenged him. I was like, you know what? I just challenge you to stop looking at it for this week. Focus on other aspects of your business. As soon as I removed him and challenged him, his ad started to convert. So you may not believe in the whole energy thing, but I literally saw it firsthand. It is so fun to run ads, but just don't stress over it too much. Let it do its thing, look at the numbers, and then tweak from there. Another tip, so number four, evolve with your data. So what do I mean by this? Evolve with your data simply means leverage the data, leverage the numbers, look at the insights that you have from any previous A-B test. Keep these in mind to help you make informed decisions for that next action or that next ad that you're placing. If you're already seeing what elements are actually working in a previous ad, do yourself a favor and incorporate them into just a standard practice. If you know a specific word works, use that word. Don't overcomplicate this. And another one actually, don't over test. So this is tip number five. Now, while continuously testing is Absolutely important, I said, to always be testing, but it's also important that you find the right balance of A-B testing. So for you to strike that right balance, you need to do a few things. You need to have that clear objective. What are you doing? Begin with your why. Understanding what do you actually want to achieve from this ad? Is it getting higher click-through rates because you notice your stats are low? Is it better conversion rates? Is it something completely else? But also prioritize the test based on the actual elements. So not all elements of your ads are always important to adjust, and you'll learn this as you're testing. But focus on the elements that are most likely to drive your back-end goal. Now, this also helps avoid unnecessary testing, even when you have a smaller budget. And lastly, which is going to be our last tip for you, tip number six, collect enough data. You've got to have data to be able to judge the results and you have to have enough data to judge the results. Nothing is going to happen overnight. You may get lucky and it will, but nothing is set in stone. One moment you may look at your ad campaign and actually just say it's underperforming. The next time you log in, let's say seven days later, the results actually skyrocket. It takes time. And my biggest fear is that you shut off an ad right before it's really about to take off. When you follow these six tips I've just given you, I know that you're going to start to see those better and better results with your ads. Now, I know today was just a lot to cover in one episode, especially adding to the last two, but the biggest thing that I hope you walk away with is to always be testing. These tests will help you improve everything. And at the end of the day, it's about backing yourself up with the right knowledge and the best practices to see that return on investment that you know that you want to see with your ads. If you aren't seeing those results, send me a message or better yet, consider joining me inside the Spotlight Theory program in 2024 to learn exactly how to run the ads that are going to bring you in those big results that I know you are looking for and you deserve. It really is a fun game and I am here to help in whatever way that you need it. So next week, we are going to take it one step farther and we are going to dive into remarketing. So I'm looking forward to it. Just know there's more to come. So enjoy your week and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.